Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the magnetic boundary condition. There are two boundary conditions available, first boundary condition and second boundary condition. First we will see the first boundary condition. The boundary is nothing but two different magnetic materials are combined together. The line separating the two magnetic materials called a boundary. So now consider a magnetic boundary formed by two different magnetic material with permeability mu r1 and mu r2. So we have the two magnetic materials are combined together that form the boundary with permeability mu r1 and mu r2. When the flux lines are coming out of this boundary its magnitude and direction changes. When the flux line flow from one magnetic material to another magnetic material what will happen there will be a change in magnitude and direction so that we are going to study in this boundary condition whether there is any change in the flux while entering into one magnetic material to another magnetic material whether there are equal or there may be some difference is there any deviation is there in the magnitude and angle we are going to study in the boundary conditions now consider this di di consider this diagram so this is the first magnetic material one refers the first magnetic material with permeability mu r1 this two refers the second magnetic material mu r2 the with permeability mu r2 both are combined together it is separated by this line so this line is nothing but a boundary between first magnetic material and second magnetic material right so the line is nothing but a boundary we consider one box is placed at the boundary such that it half of available in the first magnetic material half available in the second magnetic material right so the surface area of this box is delta s height of this box is delta h what we are going to analyze the normal component of flux density vector this is normal component of flux density vector entering the box bn2 bn1 is the normal component of flux density vector leaving the box so this flux density vector enters in the second magnetic material and leaves in the first magnetic material so it is enter in second magnetic material leave in the first magnetic material so whether both are equal we are going to analyze because of two different magnetic material any deviation in the norm, uh, normal component of flux density vector any deviation is there that we are going to analyze so this vector diagram is given this b2 this is a normal component of flux density this is a flux density b2 and b1 theta 2 is the angle of incidence incident means entering theta 1 is the angle of emergence emergence means leaving right so our aim is we need to analyze whether this bn1 and bn2 both are equal or there is any deviation is there that we are going to analyze now we'll see the description b1 and b2 be the flux density in media 1 and 2 respectively media means magnetic material right b1 and b2 theta 2 is angle of incidence theta 1 is the angle of emergence then bn1 bn1 and bn2 are the normal component of flux density vector in media 1 and 2 respectively normal component now we construct a box such that it encloses both the media that box covers both dielect both the magnetic material 1 and magnetic material 2 now we'll analyze that according to bayer savard's law we will analyze based on bayer savard's law integral b dot ds equal to 0 flux density in a closed path is equal to 0 then then what is the flux entering the box bn2 into delta s already we refer the diagram the flux density entering the box is bn2 into delta x right so the flux so b is nothing but pi by s 
so that pi equal to b dot s right so by cross multiplying this we will get so this is a b n2 is the flux density vector flux is nothing but flux density vector multiplied by surface area b dot ds so that here b n2 dot ds because b n2 is the entering the box similarly flux leaving the box is b n1 into delta s right so according to byers savart's law what is that the net flow of flux is zero that is difference between these two is zero b n2 delta s minus b n1 delta s equal to zero this delta s is common so b n2 minus b n1 of delta s equal to zero so this delta s become zero so b n2 minus b n1 equal to zero that is b n2 equal to b n1 what is that flux density entering and leaving both are equal there is no change in the magnitude and direction both are equal why there is no charged sheet available if any charge is uh, charge is available at the boundary that will make the deviation in magnitude and direction but in our diagram there is no charged sheet available so that directly we are getting these two are equal right so the statement is given normal component of flux density vectors are equal otherwise normal component of flux density vector is continuous at the boundary continuous means there is no deviation right now we'll go to the second boundary condition so the second boundary condition before going to that we'll see the sheet current density what is sheet current density k equal to current per unit length i divided by del l is nothing but the current density so from that i equal to k into delta l you cross multiply this i equal to k into delta l right it can be used in the derivation now this is the second first second magnetic material these two refers the second magnetic material this one refers the first magnetic material both are combined together this line is the boundary between second magnetic material and first magnetic material in the first boundary condition we deal about normal component of flux density vector in second mag second boundary condition we are dealing with tangential component of magnetic field intensity tangential component of magnetic field intensity we are going to deal in the second boundary condition here what we have one closed loop is available a b c d a one closed loop is available so it covers both magnetic material 1 when and magnetic material 2 it covers both the magnetic material the length is delta l the height is delta h the magnetic field intensity in the path ab is ht1 in cd is ht2 but see the direction both are opposite what about the magnetic field in the bc and da that is zero because in a perpendicular path that is zero and also the height is approaching to zero means these two are zero only we have ab and cd and our important thing we have one infinite current sheet of charge density k is placed at the boundary in first boundary condition we are not placed any any charged sheet now we are placing one infinite current sheet at the current sheet at the boundary right so the description is available ht1 and ht2 are the tangential component of magnetic field intensity in media 1 and 2 that is that is magnetic material 1 and 2 construct a rectangular path a b c d a such that it encloses both the both the bound both the media now we apply the ampere's law to the path a b c d a we are going to apply the ampere's law what is ampere's law integral h dot dl equal to i in a closed path a b c d a right in a closed path a b c d a integral h dot dl equal to i now we'll go for the further simplification now the a b c d a closed path a b c d a is now split it into four parts a b b c c d and d a four different parts that is equal to i now we we'll assume that the delta h is approaching to zero that means this b c and d a become 
0. There is no term B, C and D A because height is nearly equal to 0. Only we have A, B and C, D. What is the magnetic field intensity in A, B? H, T, 1 into delta L. We already referred in the diagram. What is the magnetic field intensity in C, D? Minus H, T, 2 into delta L because the directions are different. Vector direction is different so that we have got negative. That is equal to I. So, H T 1 delta L minus H T 2 delta L that is equal to this I is nothing but K into delta L. Already we got that current density. So, this delta L available everywhere we can cancel. So, H T 1 minus H T 2 equal to K. What is that? The, mag the magnetic field intensity, tangential component of magnetic field intensity are not equal. It is depends upon the current density, right? The current density of the charged sheet. But in the in the first boundary condition, we got B n one equal to B n two directly. But here not equal. Why? That's due to the current sheet of charge density K, right? That is depends upon the K value. Suppose if the current sheet is not available, if sheet is not present, then K equal to zero. If K equal to zero means ST1 minus ST2 equal to 0 so that, so that ST1 equal to ST2. Now both are equal when if it is no charged sheet is available then only both are equal that is given tangential component of magnetic field intensity vectors are equal right. So it is very clear the magnetic field intensity or flux density is equal only if there is no charge is available. If any charge is available in the boundary that will affect the direction and magnitude of the either flux density or magnetic field intensity. So in this video we discuss about the boundary condition, first boundary condition and second boundary condition. Thank you.